It's a little bit of a variation of the cover I did, actually. <clears throat> but maybe not as melancholy. Or maybe, yeah, let me see what. Uh, the trick to this uh, page is drawing a head from the three-quarter reverse angle. So we all know the three-quarter front angle, which is this face here. This is not quite a three-quarter reverse, but close to it. So the secret to the three-quarter reverse, draw the neck. You plant the head on it. The ear... You put on the side, it drops down right here. It's kind of the front part of that neck. You're going to see a bit of the underside of the chin. Don't even think about, don't worry about the lips. People get freaked out of the lips. They, they try to draw the lips and you don't have to do it. Don't even worry about the lips. Just go straight up. Draw the underside of the nose like that. If you think about the eye's construction from the side, here's the eyebrow. So there's this triangular element. Right? If it's from the front, if this is the eyebrow, it's this part here that casts a shadow over the eye. Right? Just draw this part. Okay? Extend that forehead there. You drop the nose down. This is the temple line here. The cheek goes from here, like that. There's a divot right there where that cheekbone is. The other ear is like right over there. This is the back part of the head. All right, so this is a comic book three quarter from reverse. And we didn't even draw the lips. You can draw the lips like that if you have to. But you're really seeing the underside of the nostril and the underside of the part that kind of sits on top of the eye. Okay, you do that in your setup. I'm just putting some lines down so that you guys have something to look at. frame? Yeah, it seemed to be. Drawing this kind of trigger that that memory. So the other ears on the other side, probably right about here, so the ear gonna is gonna be up here like that. I probably am gonna live stream I'm doing like a Batman Max cover, so at some point I will live stream that. But when? I don't know. If I'm not doing the late night streams. I try not to draw late at night anymore. That's what it comes down to. Although I have. The last time I did the covers. So, so much for that. I have ideas and then I don't necessarily execute off those ideas very well, apparently.
and and created all these characters that we love but you know this is like right around the time of image or early 90s and frank stanley of 2010 2012 2015 whatever whatever year you have i mean the guys just those, those movies have really just shown the genius of what he created and it's amazing so we kind of did as a lark, like kind of like, oh, okay, sure, why not? Get to hang out with Stan, and and I thought like, well, no one will ever see these. I'll sell like a couple hundred copies, and they will disappear. And now, this is Malcolm X hat. Just very questionable, baggy clothes. Could be worse. when I was like a teenager, you know, I think every kid should have uh, the ability to kind of purge their, it literally, and people have that opportunity to do that online. Now I gotta now I gotta Google, Google Victor. I gotta find I gotta find out what he's embarrassed by. I'm happy that you want to do that. Sure, why not? Re reverse it up a little bit. I could put her hand here. And you know that the arm is there. What's a compositional thing? It feels a little smothered to me when that arm is there. That's all. It's just a personal preference.
that they put the eyes in first. I don't know. Because if I drew the eyes over here, she'd be look, she'd look kind of bored. She's looking up right here. I'm going to put them in. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. But I feel like once I have the eyes in it, it kind of informs the rest. It's an artistic question. It's a, it's a craft. It's a technical issue. So... of uh, created techniques or um, or even how writers kind of even compose their stuff. It's just curious. And I don't know why. Other than I felt like there was something to be learned, I guess. But that's how I learned about uh, creating rain effects. Um, you'll see that I really kind of spent a lot of time doing like Zipatone effects for a while. I learned about Zipatone. I kind of went crazy with Zipatone. But I'll tell you, I was also kind of masking my own inability to, um, to draw, right? I should have been really focused on the drawing part of it. it allowed me to create some interesting effects with, with kind of limited abilities of, of, of um, drawing. But I think it, again, goes back to this whole notion that uh, we think there's like some secret. If I just do this, it will unlock some other ability. But maybe that's the part of the process is that your drawing isn't going to get good super fast. Being these other kind of rabbit holes to kind of explore and go down and go like, oh, I'm going to use this tone or I'm going to use spot color or I'm going to change up the order at which I draw this stuff. I don't know if I'm even making any sense. But in that process of exploring other things other than the drawing, it's giving your time, your, your, your mind, time to kind of process this information. <laughs> oh my gosh, the stream is degenerated. I'm lifting it up so that it's not so steep, the page. Out to draw um, reflections in glass, right? So things around them that you're seeing in the glass, right? And it's going to be abstracted a little bit because it's warped by the curvature. Maybe there's a building over here that's also kind of curved. Building over there. Don't make me hit the redo button, guys. Pepper.
I always like to say if you're going to go for some bold lighting, the more uh, blacks you can spot, like the more shadows you can place, the better you are. So keep pushing it until you break it and then start over. And then you'll start learning how far you can go before you break it. And, and maybe you can, you can do that. You can experiment on photocopies. You can, if you work digitally, hit Command Z. So I have a little bit of a Gene Colon kind of vibe to it. So I'm just creating some gray values and some transitions from the dark shadows into the white so it doesn't look quite as dark. So through the power of cross-hatching and parallel lines, I create a form and structure three-dimensionality, pecs. The wedding issue comes out July 4th week, so I think there's a couple weeks left. I have my copy, though and looks and reads great. Really nice job by Tom King and all the guest artists that help contribute. Yeah, San Diego Comic-Con is the busiest show. That week is the busiest week of the entire year for, for me and the company. Um, in contrast, like WonderCon is actually a very, it's one of the lightest schedules I have for a show that we go to. If I had to rank them, I would. That's kind of the level of intensity.
just cleaning up some of the lines, just making them look a little, a little prettier, a little cleaner, a little less haphazard or thrown, more intentioned, right? Less cavalier. My wife's still up in the Bay Area, so I'm, I'm good. Some errands I have to run today, though. Get some stuff done while the kids are out of town. Very bright green name, I can't see it. I need to do a little more research to figure out exactly. And then for everyone in chat, I've got like this. Uh... If you're interested in the Joker piece, which I will finish in a little bit, uh, send a silent whisper. Next time we do it, I'll have a different system. I just haven't had time to. Uh... I kind of understand it conceptually. I just need to. Really kind of work through all the implications of doing it that way. night sky action going on. Nope. Not so great there. Good job, Jim. Smeared some stars. I will thin out some of these lines here. Kind of beef up. Full. It's 
a little bit of a lyrical sketch in that it's kind of looser, kind of more ephemeral. It's a moment. It's a moment in time, right? That cat. All right.